Welcome to a new podcast episode. This is episode number, I don't know what yet, we're not in the tens yet. This is episode number four or five. Uh, I haven't done one in a while yet and I've been away for a couple of days. So I'm going to tackle one today. I'm going to do it today and then tomorrow I want to tackle what I have on Louis Jr. Chakwane. And I really need to get to that because I have to phone a few police officers to get to the actual information that i need but as soon as i have got that on lock you guys most definitely know i will come to you with that hot banging story there's no way we're gonna miss that out but today on the podcast we will be talking about a various number of topics as you guys know i don't come here to come and waste you guys this time um I know that some of you guys watch it out through the end, some watch it in pieces and um, some just watches a few minutes and they switch off. So I'm going to put the most important things that I want to say first and then I'll just phase them out as I go on. Now, for those of you guys that's new to this channel, the very first topic that that I would like to talk about is what is this platform built for now you guys might know me as a controversial figure due to the fact that i expose some of you guys as mentors and all of that and rightfully so i can agree somewhat to that because i do expose um mentors and my content largely runs to the controversial side of things but when you look at the numbers right when i put positivity into the industry like look at the video that I uploaded of Rolio Jack Um, and that's a guy that actually walked the route eh? we actually met yesterday in person for the very 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 first time Um, it was somewhere there in Cape Town the Western Hotel that was my first time being there and then um, when I walked past him with a with a guy that I was um, coming there to meet he was like yo look who's sitting there and I'm like yo man but The point that I'm trying to make here is when I put out positivity, like straight positivity, you guys do not pay attention to that. And that is not going to deter me from trying to put out positive content. But I see you guys run for the controversial stuff really quick now it isn't controversial per se because it always seems like I'm calling out someone and I would like to make this clear today what we do or what i do on this channel right is that i'm not calling out traders i'm calling them up to do better if i was calling them out i would lambaste them i would do what ntamus does you guys must have seen what he does on his platforms he just talks he doesn't have evidence for what he talks about he doesn't filter what he talks about he talks about any and everything that can embarrass the person that he is talking about now i don't do that when i talk about things i talk about it in the scope of forex like i know so many dirty secrets of half of the figures that you guys hold on a pedestal but why do i choose not to put it out there because it has nothing to do with forex like for instance i can't come here and be like oh this person and that person was a murderer or is a murderer that is why i haven't touched on the the case of sandile mansue you guys can go and google that and you guys can go and see what happened there what happened there um there is some people with hectic hectic cases against them in this industry that i do not touch because it isn't forex related you know but then when you look at what other people do like ndamus i'm just using him as an example because he's the only one that i can use an example because he's the only one that does this and you guys accept it so 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 easily he can't bring a screenshot he can't bring a bank account he can't bring nothing forth to prove what he is talking about he just goes off on a tangent and swears and tries to humiliate the person that he's talking about to the best of his ability but when you look at what i do i carefully point out to these guys that i expose what they are doing wrong 
I'm not even, I'm not even slambasting them that hard. I'm not even grating them like a block of cheese. But at the end of the day, those that feels some type of way, they are always going to be the one, the, the one, the two, the three, the group of people that's always going to come at me the hardest. And I need you guys to focus and to see the ones that's always going to come at me the hardest. I mean, my, my, my address once again, got shown to me and it's like, oh, one wrong move and I'll kill you. But what this person don't know, it's actually Marco. You guys know I don't hide shit. And it's because I have hectic information on him. Uh, but what Marco doesn't know is that when I exposed Clint, Clint posted all of that information that he post that he now sent me through the inboxes. He posted it for everyone to see. Like there's something that you guys need to understand. I'm not even confrontational about it. I'm coming to prove to you, this is what you're doing wrong. That is what you're doing wrong. And when I expose people that doesn't want to take accountability like Marco, then it is a case of they, 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 they come at you real hard because they can never be at fault. I mean, how many times must people complain about this guy that takes their money, teaches them, but still keeps secrets to himself of the industry? You know what I'm saying? How many times must people complain about him that... And it's it's not just him. There's a whole lot of people in this industry. I'm sorry, Marco, I can feel it on me that you are already throwing a easy fit because it feels like this podcast is about you now. But can't I'm just making a point here. Then you get those guys like, um, like the operandi. You guys have seen me go at the operandi and... In my opinion, I must say, I've gone quite hard on the operandi. Harder than I've gone on Marco. But you know what the operandi did? Most of you that follow me on Instagram would have seen the post of this I am Daniel Braz guy um, that told me, oh yeah, uh, we, we're going to get your address and we're going to come kill you. And But it is under the post of the operandi, right? And he inboxed me, the operandi, unprovoked. He inboxed me and he told me, dude, we might have our differences. We might disagree upon things, but this is unacceptable. I would like for you to take the necessary precautions to secure your life. And at that point, I've gained so much respect. You guys know how, how hard I went after the operandi, right? At that point, I gained respect for him. Because it's not every person that I have exposed that will take out the time to be like, yo, dude, I know we've said some fucked up things to each other, but please be careful out there. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm still disagreeing with what the operandi does. He knows this. I follow him on his channels openly. He doesn't block me. He doesn't restrict my access to him, which also makes me respect him a little bit more. Um, he actually called me out now, that, now the other day on um, on a post where he's like, I'm calling him a scam, but I cannot prove it. And I must show him. Okay, yeah, I'm telling you now, the operandi. What makes me believe you are too good to be true is the fact that your returns is unrealistic i'm not saying it's impossible i'm saying it's unrealistic which is the exact same thing for let's say shoe lovers i'm a shoe lover i adore all types of shoes but for me air force ones that's as far as my wallet stretches I grant me a pair of Jordan 4s. Am I going to buy it? No. It's unrealistic. I grant me a nice solid pair of Gucci sneakers. But am I going to buy it? No. Because it's unrealistic. The same thing with, with when it comes to profits. And at times... The way the market is set up right now with disaster going on and if you guys don't know traders are people that profit from 
the world's i don't say the world's carnage but from the world i don't say also from the world's there's it traders profits from the world's disasters because like this war thing is going on now uh oil is shooting up because everyone is san sanctioning russia and russia is one of the main suppliers of oil so oil is getting more expensive that is why um you will find news analysts telling people or car drivers that petrol might go to 40 rand a liter. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? But now if you're a trader, you would have known that that is going to happen. You would know that oil is Russia, uh, one of Russia's specialties. And um, you would know that um, people shank sanctioning them would um, make the price skyrocket. Um, another thing you would have also known is that gold's price would have rushed up because gold is one of the safest safe havens out there for big and small investors. But once again, if you're not a trader, you would not understand these things and you wouldn't understand how people can have a small account and turn it into something big really fast but one thing that i can tell you guys is that i have been like closely studying instead of just looking oh one thousand dollars with a hundred thousand dollars profits instead of just looking at that i've been closely studying the entry prices because the entry prices can also tell you a story about where um where those entries has been made so if i maybe put a 1.00 sell in and i wait for the market to drop so that i can get a little bit of equity and i put in another sell you know obviously with the system and all of that but when i say system i mean trading strategy because you you guys know i don't believe in electronic stuff but the point that i'm trying to make here is that i'm really trying to figure out and see how the operandi makes these amounts of money if it even is real and people are throwing the argument out there of um skill over money which i agree with because in um trading you are not gonna make money if you haven't learned one of the profitable skills out there and for me i feel it's gonna be the best for me to invite the operandi on the channel so that he can come and explain to us how we trade what his strategy comprises of and the thing is he can show it on a chart or he can explain to us but the moment he does that we can understand a little bit better so the operandi um i'm once again i'm not calling you out i'm calling you up make us understand how you do these things if you are keen to an interview you have sent me an inbox i'm sorry i haven't opened it yet i've just been running up and down these past few days i haven't had time to kind of sit down and even like analyze markets for that matter but um markets are analyzed i've had some time now to film this and with me having this time i would just like to extend a warm invitation to you to my channel so if you are keen on telling us how you trade if you are keen on telling us how you are able to take a thousand dollars right all the way i'm not even going to talk millions because i'm not someone that believes in unrealistic things but i'm inviting you to make me believe in this now i know there's a lot of people on here that's gonna disagree with me giving you a platform and all of that but if you are keen to do it i'm keen to do it and you know like we are men i can understand you are a man by the way that you have seen that message to me you're not a little child or a child in a grown man's body so we'll be able to shoot straight at each other meaning we'll be able to talk our minds straight with, straight at each other without one another being offended unnecessarily so um if you are ready for that no old board conversation my bro i'm inviting you bruh no bullshit attached i'm inviting you there is no way that 
I can continuously hop on you, I'd say, without inviting you. So I'm inviting you. And I, like I said, constantly, I'm going to say it again now. I'm inviting every single other trader on my channel that I've spoken about before. Nas 100, Zikes, Nas 100, Ape. I've spoken about Manando. I've spoken about the goats. I've spoken about Nas 100. Have I said Nas 100, Ape? Yeah? I've spoken about Kanya. I've spoken about um, Ashley Gray. I've spoken about Jason Noah. I've spoken about DJ Coach. I've spoken about Ndamus, but I will never ever interview Ndamus simply because of the fact how he gets rude and how he creates false profiles. And look, no one, no one rushes to me with mother insults. Only Ndamus does that. And because he blocked me on his real account, he would, he would do this through his fake accounts. And I'm not with that, so I will never, ever, ever interview him on this channel, ever. I spoke about Chalky B, I spoke about the Forex Queen, um, I've spoken about Marco, but I also won't interview Marco because Marco lies, and then that interview is gonna turn into me all the time trying to prove how he's lying and i know i'm right like the same deal with the rs3 the audi rs3 that he says is his and still it's not in his name i promise you he still can't provide proof of ownership that 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 document that he showed where he was like oh Rydal says it isn't my car let me go and fetch you that thing so we fetched the thing but it was actually a pink slip for the a5 cabriolet so once again that is gonna we're gonna argue the whole time and like i said i'm i'm still gonna expose people but i want to move on as well um there's so many plans there's so many content ideas that i really want to share here with you guys but i cannot share it who is this I don't know. I'm not going to answer it. I'm here with you guys. Whoever that is, that person can wait. Um, the point that I'm trying to make, but I, I can't say it out loud because it's people with bigger platforms, with um, friendly relationships to the guys that I am trying to um, interview. So let's let's keep it at interview. But um, so, yeah, you guys will see as more relationships open to me in the industry. I'll be able to do more content. It's not that I don't have the ideas. It's just that the people that I want to execute with don't want to execute. And I, I understand that because the moment I hit up a trader, they immediately get defensive because it's like, you are known for exposing people. Why are you uh, contacting me? What do you want to speak to me about? But they do not know that I actually want to do collaboration videos. I actually want to do videos where we talk about your life, where we talk about how you got to where you are now, where we talk about how forex has changed your life where we talk about how forex has changed your family's life those close to you you know because i feel like in this time there's too much emphasis being placed on um the things you can buy and all of that sure i'm gonna create content for that space as well and you guys are actually gonna dig the ideas that i have on that um but there's other content types that i would also like to explore which lets you know a little bit more about the trade and like for me i'm sorry i'm not gonna toot my own own there's it i'm not gonna toot my own own and say i'm the best but if someone has done something controversial a space is gonna be made in the show for that so it's not like i'm gonna lose my whole essence because at the end of the day i this is the image that i have for forex in south africa or the vision that i have for forex in south africa i literally have a vision where mentors are actually helping their students and mentors are actually showing their students the proper way um where mentors are actually showing the students how they trade on a day-to-day -day basis and um where students are actually profitable where students can actually make calls without needing the mentor you know what i'm saying so um 
I know we have a long way to go and unfortunately the attention is on all of the guys that does the wrong things like I can't even say anything and it's not that I'm trying to say anything negative it's just that these guys keep on doing negative things you guys must always understand that you guys must always 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 understand that Um, like, I'm gonna make an example now, no? I've shown you guys DJ Coach's cars being repossessed, right? That is me showing you how he's been lying to you about he bought the car cash, the car is in his name, he owns the car, but then boom, he gets repossessed. And then I show you guys the listing as well. I show you guys, um... The, when I'm talking about the listing, I mean the auction listing. And then I also show you guys where he himself admits to this. Now... One thing that I need you guys to understand perfectly is that most of the mentors, they do this. Most of the mentors are living a rented lifestyle, which is why you would find some traders like the video that I did on Easy. That was actually the rise and fall content story that I made about and where Marco thought it was actually him that I was talking about. Um, but... If you guys can remember clearly, 2017, 18, 2019, Easy was popping. Easy was popping. Mans was driving gold cars. But then fate turned. And now he's owing people. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, even when it comes to him, that wasn't a call out. That was a call up to be like, my bro, do better. Do better, try and always do better. Because at the end of the day, you guys made these promises to these people. So if you, if you don't catch your nonsense, there won't be anything for anyone to talk about. And when you do, at least be honest. At least be honest. At least be honest. Um, Yeah, the next uh, topic that I would like to talk about is accessibility. So this is the small conversation that I'm going to have here. I want to direct to mentors. So mentors, let me just get this clear to you. The reason why people come to me with you that's busy scamming them, right? Is because there's accessibility to me. I'm an inbox away, right? Some... Um, um, some people who phones me show some really great investigative skills and then i'm also wondering like hmm you got my phone number but how did you not figure out that this guy's a scam but anyway that's not the, con the topic of the conversation but the topic of the conversation here is that i'm accessible if I don't get to you immediately, I will get to you. And if I haven't done your story yet, trust me, I'm circling around someday. Trust me. So, normally, when you go to the authorities, right? They do not put out statements that lets other people know. This guy is busy with this and so forth. They don't put out statements that, and this is, this is my issue, guys. You send this to every mentor that you feel is a scam. And only the mentors that feel threatened by my presence will fall into the scope of what I'm saying right now. The mentors that get angry because I expose them, those are the guys that live off client money. Why? Their reputation is directly coupled to how much people think of them. But now, if you are a forex trader and your main source of income is forex trading and withdrawals, then I'm pretty sure Rydell's opinion can't affect the markets. See what I'm saying? If you are making money from the markets, and we all know this by now, I can't influence the market. <laughs> Why are you stressing on me? Hmm? Is it because you are really feeding off these people like a dirty, angry vampire? Hmm? 
So therefore they come to me because I deal with you immediately. You know, I call you up immediately. And shout out to those that's still scamming, that responds to the messages when I call them, when I directly speak to them. That is what the call up is. Um, but yeah, just because I've called you up on your inboxes and I've asked you questions, doesn't mean I'm not going to come here and talk about you. People need to know. People need... Look, it's as simple as this, guys. It's as simple as this. If you knew right that the car i'm driving outside right i'm paying on installments and this house that i'm living in i am renting and this diamond earring that you see is fake and this silver chain around my neck is fake then you will almost be more careful when you deal with me when I say this is real diamonds, this is real silver, I bought this house, my car outside, I bought cash. Do you know what I'm saying? Won't you be more alert for me? And just, just to clarify it, I don't have enough money for these diamonds. This is probably cubic zirconia, but the 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 stud and all of that the rest of the earring is silver same like this is nine to five silver same like i bought my car outside cash i'm still renting though i'm still renting but the point that i'm trying to make here at the end of the day is that the moment you know the true facts about people you aren't gonna want to deal with them because you are realizing that you are the meal ticket someone that fall that has fallen off the wagon way before covid um andele Maisela, and you guys might know him because he used to call himself mr three million rand a day and he would show people this is how i made three million rand a day and now i also believed him but um, for those of you who's on Twitter, you guys know that um, Man's Not Barry Roo, the parody account, that one ruled the Twitter streets not too long ago. Uh, in that time, in that in Andele Maisela's time, and that um, that Twitter page or the owner of that Twitter page exposed that his gold G wagon got repossessed. Now, if you were making three million rand every single day by the 10th day in the week you're sitting on 30 million won't you be able to buy a g-wagon cash he said i remember this so clearly he said that he bought a house in zimbali right some of us would know where Zimbali. Some of us would not know where Zimbali. Google is your friend though. Like it was mine when I needed to find out where Zimbali. But man said he bought a house in Zimbali. And then Ashley Astibir went to go and rent that house. So why lie? Why lie? He's talking about he it's 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 he has mining businesses and all of that. But when his reputation left him after his fight with Jason, you didn't hear of him again. The last time we heard of Andele Maisela was when someone took a picture of him sitting in the back of a CIA taxi. Why did you lie in the first place? And this is the same thing that I was speaking to the guy about yesterday, or the guys about yesterday, that I was having a meeting with. Um, is that whenever brokers, legitimate brokers, sponsor illegitimate people, they perpetuate the lifespan of said scammers' uh, shelf life. 
because they inject them with cash and in turn because that is how it works that is how influencing works that is how promos work they pay someone to bring them clients which is nothing short of a finder's fee which has been going on in business for years but the negative side of that is that let's say now i'm a scammer no? now people see businesses see brokers see out there that i have this influence over a large group of people on the internet right and now they want to work with me now they want to work with me they get me in the meetings I say what I need to say, I show them my analytics, I show them how I make jokes on Facebook and how people fall for it, I show them how I make posts and people run to it, I show them how I've recommended other brokers before who's not in existence anymore and people ran to it. And then they, they start sponsoring me. Now... I don't have to worry that much about getting people because I'm getting a big bag every month. All I have to do is talk about this broker every now and again. Send people to that broker every now and again. So, at the end of the day, by the time that that broker have realized, and I told the people that I was sitting with yesterday, you as a legitimate entity, if you sponsor illegitimate people, the day that illegitimate person, that illegitimate person's reputation flies out the window, people won't cancel him. People will cancel the brands that he or she has worked with. And I mean, that is why when I made that video about FX goats, um, I made it private again because Exynos didn't know about this nonsense that FX code caught on and that video is live now you guys can go and watch it it has the Exynos ad on it just like that and I promised you guys from a business perspective I could understand why Exynos is stepping up the way they do but then also from my perspective I'm saving that video and the moment my deal is done with Exynos I'm making that video live again and you guys can go and check it out you guys can go and check it out but the the main thing is that many aren't many aren't and it's not that i have anything against them or anything like i said it's not a call out it's a call up do better that is why when it came to their broker because of what i know because i know what i know i was constantly asking them and telling them that please just have the people of your local just have them in mind when you're making this broker man don't rip them off because i promise you the people that's gonna sign up to your brokerage is the people that's from your hood and when you are in a spiraling downfall and i'm not wishing this on anyone this is just a general statement this is not towards the the fx goats this is for people that's gonna start things in the future but when people from your hood sign up to whatever you've got going on they trust you they believe in you you are their inspiration and the moment you fall remember that those are the same people that you are gonna have to come and face and that is what a whole lot of people can't do for real this is what a lot of people can't do. Then they end up staying in town, remaining the big boys, ice boy. You guys know what I'm talking about. Ndamus! I'm not even scared to say it. You can see Ndamus isn't a big boy because that night when he got beaten with that belt, no? if he was a big boy, his friends would have stood up for him, but no one stood up for him because he's the ice boy. Okay, okay. Let me not. No, let me not. Let me not. So the main mission of this channel has been to switch the lights on 
on stuff that's happening in the dark and i feel like i've been succeeding so far that's why i have so many haters that's why i have people threatening me that's why i have people telling me oh in a way you love we're gonna come kill you and all of that which i actually don't give a fuck about but at the end of the day the light has been switched on for a while now i've come here to show you guys how people lie and scam with signals with mentorship packages with account management how they lie about having purchased houses with forex money how they lie about not living off clients money how they are lying about stealing from people how they are lying about running away with people's money i've come here and i've exposed a lot of i've even shown you guys i've gone deep into the technical route and you guys can go and check the views of that videos you will see those because it's solid education i'm showing you how scammers go on their phone to make it seem like they have real profits but it's not it's an edit i've shown you guys this have you guys shown interest in it no only a few of you have I've shown you guys how they use inspect element when they do these screen recordings of their computers because now they are dealing with a computer and because they are dealing with a computer to you automatically it's like nah it's on a computer it's legit this bra can't lie about it it's it's running through a website he can't edit that can't i shown you guys inspect element go and see how much inspect those views are there by inspect element and that is the thing that i'm trying to tell you guys the lights has been on for a while now and you guys should stop getting scammed the moment and uh, there, there is a change i don't know if you've seen this rolio is the first video and then the promos that i did for xm that is slowly moving towards the change of this channel meaning i'm gonna start interviewing people that does things above board people like rolio maybe they won't be fca regulated like rolio but they will be doing things above board like rolio like i said i will be showing you a little bit more in depth of these people's lives and how they live and once again only the genuine people will come on board with this and um yeah when i go on the road i will always make sure that i have security when i go to other people's houses to i almost gave my next content segment away because i know these other forex channels no they are watching what what i do on this channel and they copy my shit they copy my shit there's one channel in particular that said look at this guy he's busy exposing these people let me do interviews let me unexpose them there's people that has been starting exposing because of this channel and I salute you guys for that because you guys are staying true to the people. Uh, you guys are staying true. Like, we are literally being scammed every fucking day. Our government even scams us every single bloody day. And we need it to stop. And if I can contribute a little bit here, yeah, I will do it as real as possible. No cutting corners. No fear. No favor. If you're a scammer, you're gonna hear about your ass here. Um yeah so it's not to turn like this is what you guys don't understand this channel hasn't been created to turn the lights off on forex traders and turn the lights on on me so that i can look like the savior because i don't want that i don't have solutions to all of you guys' problems i don't have solutions to how you guys can safely even get your money back I mean, I've posted up in my intro the necessary people that you guys can report to and follow due processes with to be able to get your money back. But I can't tell you guys the exact, exact process of it. And the thing, the thing is, and when I say the exact, exact process of it, I mean, I don't know everything. 
I don't there's some stuff that I'm learning just as much as you guys are learning this and most of the time most of the time it's about these scammers or sorry these mentors that's turned out to be scammers because let me tell you this when I got to do a lot of videos about a lot of people that I thought was legit I got sad because to me it was like what what did I actually believe in then what did I believe in then? TJ Coach was one of them. Um, Jason was one of them. And Jason also, or I reached out to him. And I told him, my bro, because I know how felt some type of... Look, one thing, I don't mind fighting. I don't mind scoping anyone in their push. Quick, quick. I don't mind dialing that. But I can most see when there's a misunderstanding, man. And... Jason is one of the people that really misunderstands this platform. And I'm inviting you for an, an interview, a, whether you want it live in person, whether you want it happening on Skype, maybe, bro, Jason, I don't mind. Um, just know I'm with the shit, but I'm not there for that. Um, because at the end of the day, like I said, when I see a misunderstanding, I see it for what it is, my bro. And... This past time, I had the opportunity to go viral. To be real with you. I had the opportunity to go viral. Someone came to me and he was like, Jason Noah scammed them. I was like, yeah, man, not Jason again, right? And this guy actually then proceeded to show me the Instagram account that he's been chatting with. But before, before he shows me the account, right, I tell him, I ask him, and I can even pull up records where you guys can see I'm literally asking this guy, are you sure it's the real Jason? Because I'm almost dead sure that the real Jason does not take investments, right? And already I'm in doubt because evidently this man doesn't do, he, he even says it on his Insta. So it's going to be, to me, it's going to be really stupid for someone that gets scammed by someone through the way that he doesn't work. Meaning it's really ironic for me to see that someone is getting scammed by Jason for making investments through Instagram. They've, got, they've been in contact through Instagram when Jason's Instagram uh, um, per bio says no investments, you know? And once again, I'm not covering for him. I'm not covering for him. But the main point of what I'm trying to say is then I sent him these screenshots where I told the guy, listen, it's not the real Jason. The real Jason has over 400,000 followers. This Jason has about a hundred and something thousand followers. And it's because this Jason has been piggybacking off the, the real Jason's account. So there's always going to be a confusion. And I screenshot it. I sent it over to Jason and I, I sent, said to him very clearly in a voice note, um, I can't, uh, 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 and I don't want to play it now because, you know, I'm just going to paraphrase and he can also test with, in, uh, test with in case you guys think I'm talking shit. But I told him, you see, oh my bro, sometimes ne, people come to me with stories like this where someone have used a trader's name and it's not them. Now, if I was cloud chasing and if I was malicious, I would have run with that story. I would have run with that narrative. And it would have made sense because I have previous stories of Jason. It would have made perfect sense. He responded though and he says, appreciated with um, that 100 emoji. But my point there is that if I really wanted to go viral again, I could have. If I really wanted to get views and chase clout like you guys say I am here to constantly do. And please know this when I say you guys, I don't mean the supporters of the channel. I mean the haters because some of you are even here now. You still hating but you keep watching. To you guys, I don't have a bad feeling with it towards any except in Damus. Except in Damus. You shouldn't have touched on my mother and you shouldn't 
continue doing what he's doing. But other than that, I don't hate anyone in this industry. Not even Marco that like full chestedly sent me my ID number and my address and told me that he's going to come kill me. No. But the, the real thing, like I said, it's not a call out. It's a call up. You guys need to do better. As South African, huh, you guys can't want a better South Africa and call the politicians cuck, but then you guys are catching on the same cuck. Hmm? Pot calling the kettle black vibes. Nah, man. It's not going to work like that. So, I'm not calling out no one. I'm just calling you guys up to start doing better. You guys are in the industry. I can't remove you from this industry. I'm not an authoritative figure in this industry. So, therefore, I can't call you out. I'm just calling you up to do better. And if you were smart, you would see it like that. But most of you guys don't. Because it is easier to tell a idle cuck. Um, so yeah, um, and the other thing also, no, the reason why those people, because this is, I see the next topic, oh, I've, oh, so nicely, the next thing why, oh, that I wanted to talk about is why the mentors hate me, no, is because, same like politicians, no, the politicians profits of the people that's, sorry man to say it like that, that's dumb, that's ignorant, that's deliberately ignorant, Politicians profit from them. Now, it's the very same with scam mentors. They profit of keeping their people dumb. They profit of people not knowing the real... I wouldn't say the real uh, knowledge because the knowledge stretches way deeper than what I am. Like, I'm just... I'm literally just touching the shallows i'm not even in the deep end if you guys want the deep end though go to koshi karan twitter he's gonna dive into finance um um i can't remember now man but i know it has something to do with he's gonna he's gonna dive into finance scams but i bet it's gonna be on a much larger scale than what I'm doing. So go and check him out on Twitter. That man is boss. That man is the shit. He knows exactly how to put things in perspective for you. He doesn't just ramble all over the place like me. But mentors will forever hate people like Koshik. They will forever hate people like me. Because um, the moment we release knowledge and people become aware of things they will start becoming selective about who they fuck with and where they want to spend their money and the big deal here is that these mentors know this they know that if their clients have a better option to go to they won't come to them and that is why they have to go on hate parades. That is why they have to constantly mum you guys. Do you know how they limit your thinking? And I'm talking to the haters now. Your thinking has been limited to the point that you are made believe that Rydell is poor, Rydell is broke. He's staying in his dead mother's house. So he cannot have an opinion about whatever is happening in the rich people world but then you uh, they aren't even rich they rich on borrowed time they rich with other people's money like this thing if you guys want to it obviously i can't see it because grootman blocked me he posted it first on instagram and things are really gonna end badly for that guy and it's not that i'm speaking this over his life because obviously i have respect for life i don't want anyone to just be killed willy-nilly but you guys have seen his track record and the people on twitter is already like nah this needs to stop because he recently bought a car i think it was for his mother or car for him i'm not sure um and people are really getting fed up because they've made investments and they've seen nothing but Hey, look here, new cars. And if they knew earlier what Grootman was doing, what his modus operandi is, 
They wouldn't have dealt with him, would they? They wouldn't have dealt with him. And that is where the profitability of a mentor lies within him keeping up the appearance. That is why I say, that is why I say, you guys that's in groups where you guys must pay a monthly fee, come together, no? Come together and just, uh, like that exercise we did in the past with NAS 100 Zikes, no? I uploaded a video before the weekend, no? That weekend came. He went to the club and the bottle girls only brought out two bottles instead of the five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bottles. Why? Because people listened to the test. So we couldn't flex the way he used to flex because that money didn't come in. Go and watch that video. I think there's two or three videos about NAS 100 x on this channel, but go and watch it. So, once again, like I'm telling you guys, you guys that's in groups where you guys must pay monthly fees, come together collectively, no? And then you all decide you are not going to pay for two to three months or for one month even. You're not going to renew for one month. You will see... How quick 50% specials and 75% specials is thrown out there. Just to replace what you have been giving all along. That is why whenever I expose people, they don't ever run to evidence that can disprove what I have just said. They run to positions that took my anyway later in life gets repossessed why but i'm the bad guy so that is why they hate me that's why they're always gonna hate me because the less knowledge is out there the less the more profit sorry the less knowledge is out there the more profit is out there for them because then there is more ignorant people that they can flows that they can pull the wool over their eyes so whenever i drop a video guys do not look at who i'm talking about look at the information in the video because the information in the video will tell you how he's making his money how he's scamming you where you fit in in all of this grand parade where the marketing fits in in all of this grand parade and eventually and ultimately the main thing is how they manage to maintain this lifestyle. Do not look at the names that I'm exposing. Because they already, as a viewer, you've gone wrong. Rather look at the information that is being relayed in the video. Then you can decide and say, okay, nah, it's a cuck video. Or, nah, look, I've learned something new today. Let me go and try. Let me go and research. Let me go and see if what Rydell is talking about is true. We got to forget the government because the government have already forgot us. That is why these people ran to me. Because I don't take time like the government. I call you up immediately. Immediately. And you could have treated me with disrespect lost. I will still come to you in a respectable fashion to let you know. Listen, I've heard so and so and so about you. Can you tell me a little bit more? Can you tell me your side of the story? And if you get disrespectful again, that's fine. That's fine. But one thing I know is that if you go low, I'm not going to go low as well. I'm going to go to hell when I make your video. <laughs> So, after knowing and taking into consideration that these guys are limiting you guys' thinking, please go out there and research what not only I am saying, because me, I gladly welcome that challenge. 
go out there and go find where I've lied about things. Go out there and go find things that I wasn't able to prove. Go out there and find the evidence evens that's fake, that's made up, that's lied, that is photoshopped like most of these Mentos blue screens. Go and show to me where I have put out any false information. Show me. Because I don't come here to come and pre spread falsehoods. I don't. Spreading a falsehood is like asking for a lawsuit. And that's on facts. That's on facts. So, the poor thing, I see the last. The last, I've, I've written a little note here that said before you sign off, say this. The last thing that I do want to say now before I leave, because I'm, I'm going to spot now. I want you guys to... Sorry, I want you guys to take this into consideration. These mentors that I come to expose here on the regular, these guys don't care about your money. When most of these guys that we hold in high regard, when they have received payment, they do not care about how you're doing. They do not care if you are doing well even. Because what they will care about is their own lifestyle. So if mentors do not care about you, like I've shown you guys here, why are you still caring about them? Why are you still pouring your money into them? Why are you still giving your money freely to them every month? It just doesn't make sense to me. Please clear that up for me. That is today's podcast. Um, I will go live pretty soon. I'm just getting to the last bits of um, the number because, like I said, we are going to have live call-ins. So, um, Friday night, I think we should, Friday night, prepare you guys for a live on Friday night, and then I will share the number that you guys can call, and then while we are doing the live, you guys can obviously, you will have a, a, a chance to contact me, and to phone in on the live, and say your say, live, where people can see you, straight up. Um, it's been cool, it's been great, it's been awesome, you guys know I love coming here to come and talk to you guys it's been an hour my black lips are tired like Ndamu would have said now my tongue is tired I can't talk for the rest of the day so my lady must just excuse me but if you came this far and you enjoyed today's podcast please do smash the like button if you have anything to say I am really keen to hear it please do leave your comments in the comment section Please do share this podcast around so that people can know that there is a podcast within the Forex space and we do not care about the bullshit. We shoot straight facts and that is how we keep it. If you are new here, please do smash the subscribe button while you're at it. Please do hit that bell notification icon so that you can be notified when I release new content. But on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.